Hey guys, my name is Megan from the blog Wilsonhomestead.com and today I want to do a late summer garden tour for you guys. I just put my daughter to bed and I'm going to bring my little six months old son with me to show you the garden. I have some green beans in the canner so it's a good time to take a little break and do a little garden tour. I will link the video showing when we planted all the seeds and all of our garden plants for this year so you can see if we reached our goals. But I'm excited to show you guys everything that's going on out there. It's looking really pretty. Don't judge all the weeds. I've only weeded twice this whole summer. I'm just so busy that I feel like if we get a little less crops from the garden because of the weeds, it'll be worth it because I am going like 100 miles an hour all the time. So don't mind the weeds, but let's go look at the garden. So here is kind of an overview of the whole garden. So over here we have rhubarb. This is knee deep harvest soon and this will be the third harvest that I've done. This rhubarb plant has produced so much this year. Here is a nice big weed that is very prickly so I need gloves to pick it. There's my chives, sage, tarragon is getting really huge, oregano is getting huge. All my herbs did really good this year. We have a little patch of carrots right here. There's some kohlrabi and cabbage that is not getting very big, not doing the best, but that's okay. And then here we have a, a little beet patch. All these beets are really tiny compared to the ones in our raised bed. We definitely noticed a huge difference in the quality of all the vegetables in the raised beds versus this, these beds in the ground. We definitely prefer the raised beds. We have a ton of sunflowers and they make me so happy. Right out this kitchen window right here, I can look at all the sunflowers while I wash dishes and it's amazing. They are so tall. They're actually quite a bit taller than me, which is weird because I'm 6'1", so it's kind of fun that they're taller than me now. They actually have so many flowers on each plant that they're tipping over a little bit. We have a few little random tomato plants here that I think Luke just put them there because we didn't have any more room in our raised bed that has tomato plants. This whole two rows right here of beans, there's some pole beans and some bush beans and then and then this row right here on the edge by the bricks is lettuce and we got so much lettuce out of that this summer it was amazing to just come out here and pick some lettuce and some kale and some kohlrabi leaves and some tomato and make a nice little salad from our garden we did some buckets just to see the difference of how they did and the buckets definitely didn't do very well i mean look how short these sunflowers are like that's just a little pathetic <laughs> but we have marigolds a sunflower, lettuce, cabbage that's not doing very well, tomato plant, another sunflower, more marigolds, beets, squash, more marigolds, another sunflower, another tomato plant. This was more marigolds that aren't doing very well. I think they're getting too dried out. Squash. And this was my celery starts from that I did in the kitchen this year with some celery ends we got from the store. And then you just walk down this path next to this garden. And these raised beds did so good. Here's our pole beans right here. They're getting so tall. This one is up to the top of the trellis. I have gotten so many beans off of this plant. I mean, I've done several harvests already and there's just so many beans on it already. Look at this, they're just all over the place. It's amazing. I've probably got like 15, 20 pounds of tomatoes from these beans, the beans over here, and these beans over here. We have a little row of kale right here. There's a big beet patch, and these beets are looking really good. They're actually getting quite large. So pretty soon I will harvest all these and can them. We have some cabbage and kohlrabi all mixed right here. There's been some bugs getting on these cabbage leaves, so I am not sure how well they're gonna do. We probably won't get any from them, but it was kind of a fun experiment. And then we have the beans over on the side. They're not as tall, and there's a few bush beans down there that have kind of gotten crowded out, but they're still there. And then we have our tomato bed. A whole raised bed with 17 tomato plants. Here's our one cherry tomato. We have one plum tomato right here. The rest of these are a mix between beefsteak and Dr. Witch's yellow. 
I see a ripe beef steak in there hiding. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that. But all these did so well. This cherry tomato is getting so tall. I mean, look how tall these steaks are. And it's like trying to keep growing. It's crazy. And then behind the tomato bed, we have our squash patch. And it's so big. It's amazing. So they're alternating buttercup, spaghetti squash, buttercup, spaghetti squash, buttercup, spaghetti squash. And they're both doing really well. You can see they're hiding in here, but there's one. It's actually really hard to find them in here. <laughs> We're probably gonna accidentally miss some. But these leaves are such a good cover. Oh, here's one. See one in there. Oh, here we go. Here's a spaghetti squash in there. They're just all over the place. And I keep finding them, so I know we have a lot. This is gonna be great to can all of these. Okay, and then if you come over here, we have buckets along this fence too, with kind of a combination of all the stuff again. And it was kind of a fun experiment to see how well buckets did. And I think if we did buckets again, we wouldn't put drain holes in the bottom because they dry out so much faster than the raised beds. And it's hard to water just the buckets and not the beds if you're doing the sprinkler. So it was a really fun experiment and you can definitely tell that the, they just don't do as well in buckets as raised beds and not even as well as the garden in the ground over there. For beginner gardeners, this did pretty well and I'm really happy with how everything turned out. And it was a lot of fun for us to do. And then over here behind the squash, we have a bunch of piles of wood chips. I'm hoping that we can maybe lay some black plastic around this tree because all these starts are coming up and they will not go away. No matter how many wood chips we pile over them, they just keep growing. So we recently got all these piles and over the winter, hopefully we can put some plastic down and it'll kill all these starts and then we can put wood chips over that. And then if we stay here longer, we would put a bunch of long raised beds all along this area, like a whole bunch of them. We could expand the garden so much with this little area right here. But our plan is to move in the spring, so we might not be able to do that, but if we were to stay here, that's what we would do with it. Over here we have our meat rabbits that are going up to be butchered, and we have our whole chicken yard. And once it's winter and all of our plants are done producing, we'll let the chickens in here and let them get all the bugs they want and they will be so happy about it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this kind of late summer garden tour and I will see you in my next video. Bye! Okay.